VIG is Vanguard's Dividend Growth ETF. VOO and VTI are their broad market index funds for the S&P 500 index and total US stock market, respectively. Let's compare them. We can compare VIG to both VOO and VTI at the same time, as VTI is the total US stock market, and VOO, being the S&P 500, is a sufficient barometer for the entire US stock market, and the two perform nearly identically. I delved into comparing VOO and VTI in a separate video here. VIG is established in 2006 is the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF. As the name implies, this ETF captures dividend growth stocks, companies with a historically increasing dividend. VIG seeks to track the S&P US Dividend Growers Index. These are US companies with a growing dividend over at least the past 10 years. The fund excludes the top 25% highest yielding stocks, as high yield is sometimes a sign of an unstable company. Holdings are market cap weighted and are capped at 4%. In terms of factor exposure, VIG provides provides appreciable exposure to both the profitability and investment factors, but actually has small negative loadings on size and value. VOO is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. Established in 2010, it is one of the most popular ETFs out there. The fund seeks to track the famous S&P 500 index, a market cap weighted index of over 500 US large cap stocks across all sectors. This index is considered a barometer for the US stock market. VTI is the Vanguard total stock market ETF. It was established in 2001. VTI provides similar broad exposure to the US stock market, but also includes small and mid cap stocks. Specifically, VTI is about 82% large caps, 12% mid caps, and 6% small caps. Put another way, VOO comprises roughly 82% of VTI by weight. VTI seeks to track the crisp US total market index. This ETF has over 4,000 holdings. Consequently, VTI can be considered more diversified than VOO. All three of these funds only hold stocks in the United States. Both VOO and VTI include REITs, while VIG does not. Sector weightings are naturally very different for VIG than for VOO and VTI. Notice how VIG drastically underweights telecom, energy, and real estate stocks relative to the market. Specifically, VIG comprises only about a third of the market by weight. Thus, in my opinion, VIG alone would not be sufficient as a core holding for a well-diversified investment portfolio and should probably only be used to tilt or overweight dividend growth stocks in one's portfolio. This may be attractive for dividend investors. I'm not a dividend investor, but I did design a dividend-focused portfolio that incorporates VIG. Put another way, VIG provides naive exposure to the profitability and investment factors. Going back to 2006 when VIG launched, VOO has beaten it handily, delivering a higher general and risk-adjusted return over the time period. Though all three of these funds are highly liquid and very popular, Vanguard's VOO and VTI are much more popular than VIG with over $500 billion and $900 billion in assets respectively, compared to about $60 billion for VIG. VIG has an expense ratio of 0.06% or 6 basis points, while VOO and VTI cost half that with an expense ratio of 0.03%. In conclusion, investors seeking broad diversified exposure to the US stock market should use VOO or VTI as a core holding. VIG is basically holding US large cap dividend growth stocks with robust profitability and a conservative investment approach. Also remember VIG either excludes or underweights energy, telecom, and real estate stocks. VOO and VTI have outperformed VIG going back to VIG's inception in 2006 on both a general and risk-adjusted basis. VOO and VTI are also more popular and slightly cheaper than VIG. Do you own any of these Vanguard funds? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.